Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. We're going to talk about what is SEO and we're going to have some fun. Now, it is a dry topic. Can we say dry topic? (laughs) People are like, oh, yawn, SEO. But here's the deal. SEO is super important for anybody, anybody who is in business. Okay, let's look at what it is. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So that is a fancy way of saying, if it's on the internet, SEO is going to help people find you. So let's talk about all of the ways that you market through SEO. And then let's talk about how SEO benefits your business. Now, SEO, goodness. Okay, since SEO is how you search the entire interweb for your brand, SEO is pretty much anything that is on the internet. So let's look at that. That is your website. That is your Google My Business page. By the way, if you have not established a Google My Business page for your business Red flag, make sure that that's the number one thing you go out and do. It's free and it allows Google to find you. It requires your address. It wants you to tell Google about what your business hours are, what you're all about, what are the major keywords. It's also where people post your reviews. And when people are going on to their Google Home or other Android devices, when they're doing voice search, they are using the Google business listings to find you. For example, okay, Google, what is a construction company near me? That artificial intelligence, oh, she and she's going off telling me. That's hilarious. (laughs) And she heard me and she's trying to tell me who's close to me within a five mile radius of Monterey, California, which doesn't help all of you guys up in Palo Alto or Martinez or wherever, but that's okay. It's all good. But the point being is that the Google business listings, all you need to have a Google business listing is get yourself a Gmail account. All you have to do is just get yourself a Gmail address. And with a Gmail address, you have the keys to the kingdom. You have the keys to all of the free Google documents that they have, Google Maps, Google My Business, and your own YouTube channel. Let's talk about YouTube and SEO. All right, everybody, what's the number one search engine on the planet? Can I ask a question? Sure. So you're, you're saying in order to get a Google business page, you just have to have a Google email address? Uh-huh. And then you can go ahead and make yourself an owner and manager of that. Yep. Okay, cool. Sorry. No, no, no. There's no sorry. This is good. I'm super glad that... See, this is why I love interactive, right? Interrupt, please, because I want this to be real and I want this to be super valuable, even for the people who are doing the replay, right? I want you guys to be able to take something away from this because I could read from a dry presentation, but no, no, no. (laughs) We're here to be interactive, right, Tom? So... So the thing is, is that, yeah, if you, if you look at what is the largest search engine on the planet, Google, yep. by the way, fun fact, do you know what Bing stands for? Bing is Microsoft's search engine uh, option, which replaced Explorer. Do you know what it stands for? Nope. Bing, Bing stands for, but it's not Google. Yes, it's true. Even the second largest search engine, well, not really the second, a far distant, distant second Microsoft search engine uh, platform also gives a nod to Google because why? Google is the category king of search engines. All right. What is the number two search engine on the planet? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Facebook, Amazon, YouTube. YouTube! Yes. Also owned by Google. Yes. Okay. So the top Top one and two are owned by the same folks. So figure this out, folks. Yeah. (laughs) You need to be found on the internet. Now, so I told you about Google business listings and all you need for the keys to the kingdom is that Gmail address. Well, guess what? That Gmail address will also get you your account to your own YouTube channel. And you can 
take your little phone, make little videos of yourself. You can, oh my gosh, if you're not doing video marketing already, let me just take a moment. And this is part of the SEO talk, okay? Take videos of yourself at your job showing what a before and after is. Take videos of yourself explaining the process. Here are the five steps that we need to take in order to, to execute this. Or here are the five things that uh, prospective remodelers need to know about X, Y, or Z. This right here, this plays into your SEO. Why? Well, first off, all you have to do is take a video of yourself and upload it onto YouTube and write out the keywords that you're addressing, write out a title that's compelling and describe what it is that you're talking about. And make sure in the description of that YouTube video, there's the description part when you upload the, the video, it's super easy. The point is you wanna make sure that your website address is in that description so people can find you because if they fall in love with the video they're going to want to learn more about your business yes so make it easy for them don't make them hunt you down they've already hunted you down give them what they need and that is your url to your website and bonus give them the link to your facebook give them the link to your google my business give them the link to linkedin twitter instagram etc 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 Look, back in the day when I first started doing social media, people were like, oh, Jen, that's a fad. That's not going to work. I've got the yellow pages and the newspaper ads and word of mouth referrals that bring me business. I don't need that stuff. Huh? Well, that was 2007. <laughs> That was 2007 I was hearing that. And I was even hearing late adopters as late as 2018 saying, oh, that social media thing. Well, let me tell you something. COVID changed it all. COVID made us all go online and all hang out on social media because that was the only way we were going to interact with other people outside of our houses. Yes. So the tipping point was truly truly reached. I mean, all, even the late adopters, the people who are still using a rotary phone because they can. <laughs> okay. These are the folks that are finally realizing, okay, maybe I need to be online. Maybe I need to be on social media. And yes, your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, all the things you're doing on social media, true or false, does it contribute to your SEO? Does it contribute to people finding you online? Hell yeah. Yeah, that's a true. That's a true. Okay. So I, I cannot state it enough. It is, it is huge and it is important. If you want your business to be more than just a job for yourself, if you want to scale and grow and actually have a real business that you can step away from it and it still exists on its own, you've got a lot of steps to take in order to get that point. You got to get your st st uh, standard operating procedures. You got to get a crew. You got to get everything going. But the very first step, the very first step toward your success, being found online. Number one, that's baby step number one. You can... Talk about all the things you want to do, but unless people can find you, you ain't being found. Okay, so let's address all this. How do you get good SEO? Okay. This is a, this is a very, uh, this is, have you ever had a question that seems so simple, but it's got like multiple layers to an onion? So when someone says to, to you, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> You're like, you're like, well, shit. <laughs> Pardon my cursing. I hope I don't offend anybody, but that's who I am. I'm authentic. But the point is, is that there's several layers to the onion. So actually later on today, I'm teaching another class called How Much Content is Enough Content? And SEO and the internet is a monster that needs to be fed regularly. So let me tell you how to be a superstar in the SEO world. Number one, make sure that you are present on all of the channels. Make sure that you have a website that is highly indexable and, and has constant updates. And what I mean by that is 
make sure that your website, okay, let's just talk about the website because this is a big monster on its own. Make sure that 100% of the content on your website is original content. If you're not sure if stuff is copied and pasted onto your website, there's a thing called copyscape.com. Copyscape.com is where teachers can go in and find out if the students have plagiarized their reports. Yeah, well, guess what? You can use that to see if anybody has plagiarized your website. And oh. you can see from the results of that, when you go on Copyscape, you grab, let's just grab like any random page from your website, grab your homepage or grab your frequently asked questions page. And you pop that thing into Copyscape, you're going to see exactly what other websites have the same damn content as you. If you find that anybody else has the same content as you, I highly advise rewrite that and tell your unique and original story. If you need help with that, great. That's what I do very well. Call me, Jennifer Phils in Rockstar Marketing. No big deal. But I don't care who does it. You need to make sure that you have 100% original content on your website. Why? Well, when the search engines and a little Google search bots are running through indexing the entire planet of websites, your stuff needs to be original because the more copied content that there is out there, your rankings go down. So originality helps boost you toward the top of the search engine results pages, SERPs, search and result pages, okay? So get rid of that copied content and go for 100% unique content on your website. That's step number one. Step number two with your website, make sure that you are updating your website rather frequently because just as original content helps you with your search engine results page rankability, so does fresh content. Because again, those search engines, those search bots, they're going through like, hey, hey, does Tom have anything new on his website? Does does Mark have anything new on his website? No, nothing. Okay, well, great. Well, this other person has new stuff on their website. So we're going to rank them above because they are more fresh. It's like perishable goods at the grocery store, right? You don't want to see the old bananas at the back of the row. You want to see them toward the front. So people buy the older stuff first. So that way the younger stuff is toward the back, right? Same thing, freshness of content, perishable goods. Think of that with your website. So how do you do that? Make sure you have a monthly blog. If you want to do a weekly blog, that's fine. But let me tell you something about this danger. Make sure that you are consistent in your persistence. Write that down, folks. Consistent persistence. Once again, consistent persistence. Yeah, easy for me to say. You know what? It's just like brushing your teeth, okay? If you don't brush your teeth but three weeks out of the year, who's going to get some cavities? or possibly a root canal, right? Or just horrific breath, <laughs> right? Okay, you can't go on a diet for three weeks and expect to keep that 60 pounds off. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Consistent, persistent is what's required for your website. And that's why you need a monthly blog dedicated. Yes, Mark, I love your questions. Keep them coming. Um, so you're saying like, when you blog, do you blog on your actual website or do you blog on like, so like you can create a blog on your website? Yes, okay, great question. There are blog sites like medium.com. That's a place where people will be blogging. But here's the deal. When you go on anybody else's network, you don't own it. Right. You don't own it. But when it's on your website, you own that. And that helps with your search engine rankings. If you are a blogger on other people's websites, on blog sites, you're helping their rankings, not yours. So all you have to do is if you have a WordPress site, all you have to do is uh, add a blog. It's, it's, it's posts, it's under posts. There's pages and there's posts. So the pages are the landing pages and the posts are where you put your blog. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, again, Jennifer Phils in Rockstar Marketing, I'll be happy to assist you with that. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff? Yeah. Keep up the good questions. Okay, so yes, make sure that you have a monthly blog. And the reason why I say monthly is a month is just fine. If you want to go crazy, go ahead, do a week, every week, a blog or every two weeks. But 
If you are good at doing it for a short period of time, then you drop off. You are not being consistent in your persistence. You are not sticking to brushing your teeth. You're not sticking to your diet. You're not being the good exerciser that you know you should be. If you cannot do it consistently and persistently, hire someone to do it. Did you know that CEOs of businesses that delegate their work out to someone else make 33% more money than those that do not delegate? Delegate that stuff. Leave it to the people who know what it is that they're doing because here's the deal. Okay, I am not going to be renovating my own home. I'm not even going to fix the broken thing because I don't know how. And if I'm tasked to do it, I'm going to have to go to Home Depot and spend an, an ungodly amount of money on stuff that I don't know what I need. I'm going to have to spend some time researching it on YouTube because I don't know what I'm doing. I Seriously, I'm I'm... I'm afraid of replacing light bulbs in the light fixture in my garage because I don't know how to do it because it's a little complicated track lighting. I know to the average electrician, they're probably laughing at me. And the average handyman is like, ha, 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 ha. But I'll tell you something. I can write a blog in 20 minutes. I'll bet you you can't. Yeah. <laughs> so we all have our own genius, right? My cape, my superpowers that are with my cape are with marketing. That's what I am a super genius at. And I know that you all have your talents. If you're not a super genius at it, and you know that you can go make more money by going and doing your super genius, delegate it out to someone who can do it quicker, better, faster than you. Because I guarantee you, even if I were to replace the stupid light bulbs or change some of the hardware on my cabinetry, you guys could do it better, faster, cheaper than I could. Got it? So delegate that. All right. So that's about the website. That's about the website. But let's talk about all the other things. Yes, social media is extremely important. Not only is it good for search engine optimization, but it's also just good for legitimizing your business, folks. When more people who are searching for you can see that your brand is everywhere, it's on all the channels, then you are more legitimate in their minds and it helps with your brand awareness. For all of you people who think that social media is like no big deal, let's just, let's just even go back to television, okay? By the way, internet viewership surpassed television back in 2018. So for those people who are clinging on to, no, 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 television is the place, no, honey. <laughs> That's so 2018, that's so 2000 late. OK, so, so when you put your stuff up on social media, you want to make sure that you're on all the channels. Imagine back in the old television days that you had a commercial running. OK, do you want that commercial to be running only on NBC? No, you want it on NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, CNN, MTV, you know, HGTV. Like you want all the, you want your commercial on all of the channels, right? Yeah. Same thing with social media. When you put your video, you take that little video. Here's, here's how to do it. Write down these steps. Number one, take your video, record it on your phone. Step number two, upload it to YouTube. And part of that, make sure you have a nice description, a nice title, put in your keywords, put in your hyperlink to your website so people can find you. Step number three, take the link of that video and put it on all of your social media channels. Which ones, Jen? Ah, the ones that are major. You can also go to the minor ones, but let's just go with the heavy hitters, the big players, okay? Facebook? Why? Because a lot of the people who buy from you who are in the 40s to 70s of age range who have a lot of money, they're on Facebook. Instagram. Why? Same reason. Females between 40, actually no, 30 to 70, actually 30 to 80 are on <clears throat> Facebook. That's where the women hang out. You want women to buy from you? Go to Instagram. Twitter, that's where a lot of the dudes hang out. Yeah, I'm generalizing here, but believe me, when I say demographic wise, Twitter is more popular with dudes. Why? Because it has a it has a hunter mentality. I can get in and get out. It doesn't take me too long. Instagram and Facebook have more of a farmer mentality where people want to hang out and grow their crops and nurture their fields. Okay, that's the mentality of it. Then there's Pinterest for those of you who are really into that. Um, 
There's also LinkedIn where the professionals are. And by the way, LinkedIn is like a workhorse that you may or may not be aware of. LinkedIn is super important because again, it's a professional site for people looking for jobs and looking for professional networking. But these are the moneyed people who are your target audience. They're the ones that have the money to pay for that remodel, to pay for that high-end painting job, to pay for that new home. So you wanna make sure that your commercial that you just took with your phone is now on all of the social media channels. But there's a social media channel that no one ever talks about because it's really not a social media channel, but it kind of is. And it's like, it's like the underdog. Next door. Uh, well, there's that. Oh, that's another good one. Okay, put it on, put it on next door. But nope, nope, there's another one that you may not even think about because no one ever ever thinks of this as a social media channel. Google my business. Amazon? Google my business. Mm. Okay. okay. So let me, let me even, oh, can I share my screen? I can share my screen, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, share 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 my screen. Hold on. Yeah. Let me share my screen real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys something really cool. All right. I'm going to log into Google My Business, google.com slash business. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna log into here. Now, all I need is my Gmail account, which is awesome, right? But look, I manage all of these different businesses on Google My Business, but let's just go to the Rockstar Marketing one because I don't wanna show off all my client stuff. But check this out. This is why Google My Business is a little secret weapon. And if you regularly post your social media and your videos on Google My Business, this is going to make your SEO performance skyrocket because no one else is doing this. So check this out. You can schedule posts. You can schedule social media posts on your Google My Business and it helps boost your rankings. So well, Jen, this isn't a social media site. Like, how is anyone going to find you? Well, when people are searching for rock star marketing, oops, if I could just type Monterey, California, let me make this a little bit bigger. They're going to see all the things about your business. And as you scroll down, look, look at my posts. My posts get up here on the Google My Business listing page for my business. Ooh, does that help my SEO? You bet, you bet your bippy it does. And look, I can even have links to my other profiles. Seriously, Google My Business is your secret, secret weapon. And to add to that fun, I've been in the marketing world a long time. This month, October 2021, marks the 12th year that Rockstar Marketing has been in business. I, as far as I know, I am the only marketing agency that I have seen that is actually posting social media posts to Google My Business, and it is really performing well for my clients. So, SMO. That, and Jennifer, so does that mean that when you do that and you put your links put, and you also put your addresses to your profiles that you have maybe on Facebook or on Instagram and so forth, like the icons that we saw there a second ago, that means that when you post on Google My Business, it's going to post for you to those websites, or you still have to go ahead and do the posts individually yourself? You have to schedule those posts individually on the different channels, but it just, it just helps with your SEO rankings. So great, great question. Now, a lot of people, ooh, you guys are getting all kinds of bonus out of me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going to show you something else. <laughs> <laughs> Because I thought there was a tool that could do that kind of a thing where, so to eliminate the, I need to post it here and then post it there and post it all separately, yes. but something that like disperses it, you know, it's to each of you. It's called Hootsuite. Hoots, yes, that's what the name of it is. H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, Hootsuite. Yes. So again, I have an enterprise plan. So when I open this thing up, I am paying some serious money because I am managing like 60 different clients on all of the accounts. But let me tell you, this dashboard is so sexy. But anyway, let me just give you a quick little uh, example. 
if I, and, and this is so cool. I can even just, um, I can look up rock stars, um, social media accounts individually, or I grouped everything as a team. So all I have to do is click once and it has all of my channels in that team. So all I have to do is click once. I love efficiency. Oh my gosh. Efficiency hacks are so sexy. So when I can find Mm -hmm. ways of being super efficient and Hootsuite takes the chaos out of my life as the social media marketing manager for all of my clients. And all I have to do is just put in, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do a test. Let me just come up with something cool. Um, Let me do a screenshot of you guys. Smile, smile, smile. Okay, great. I did a screenshot (laughs) and I'm typing in teaching all about SEO and the importance of it to my uh, tribe at Nari SV. Uh, hope you all got some got some great value out of my class. I know it's like I'm doing it in past tense, but bear with me. You know, yeah, <laughs> right? Because yep. people will be like, "What?" Okay, so then all I have to do is take this take this screenshot and boom, drop it in, and ta da! There we are. Can we say efficient? Now I do have to edit the image. I have to edit the image to fit to the parameters for, um, Mm. for Instagram, but that's easy, right? So let's see. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to, well, I'm going to, sorry, Tanya, I'm going to have to like cut off the Silicon Valley part just to make sure I don't cut off the top of my head. But anyway, I am now configured it to, oh, it still wants to, okay, fine. Be a pain in the butt. Okay. Instagram is finicky. So we're just going to let Instagram go bye-bye. So no big deal. And then I post it now, or I could schedule it for later. I could say, you know what? I really just want to have it uh, go out tomorrow. So let's, uh, let's schedule it for tomorrow and let's have it go at this time tomorrow. Great. It's good because then you could say, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to change it, but if something captures my mind between now and then I can still edit and before it gets released. But if not, then it's going out like it needs to go out every. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Wait, exactly. So does that, does that go out to like all your social media things? Yep. I just posted with the exception of Instagram because Instagram was being a pain. I sent it to Twitter, LinkedIn, my various Facebook groups, my Facebook page. um, Yeah, the only one I haven't done it to is Google My Business. So with Google My Business, this is the reason, I'll show you the little dirty secret as to why hardly anyone does it. Um, Uses Google My Business? Yeah, well, why they don't schedule it much because you have to do it. Or they don't, okay. So let's see here. If I go to, hold on, I got to grab what I just created. Ah, I just, okay. So let's show you how to find what you just came up with. Okay. So let's just go with Rockstar Marketing. And I know that we're going to look at it for tomorrow. Okay. And I'm going to edit this and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to save those edits. Aha. Now I'm back over here. I actually do have a software that I'm paying for called one up and I'm paying a pretty penny for me to schedule things. But this is the main reason why most people do not uh, post on Google, my business, because they have to pay extra to get this little software to do scheduling. Otherwise you have to do it manually. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a post and I'm going to show what's new. I'm going to write my post. I'm going to grab my little video. Sorry guys. I have to like, find it, drag it in, and then publish. Boom, done. Easy, easy. Now I, now with the exception of Instagram, Mark, I have uploaded for everybody. Okay. You guys did see that, right? I did share the screen on all that, right? You guys could see it? I could, yeah, we could see that you were, I could, well, we didn't see your post go out, but we were, the last screen, I think maybe Mark, we were looking at was the one that she was showing you (laughs) choosing which, which accounts are trying to adjust it for Instagram. 
So sorry. Here I was thinking I shared the screen. Okay. I'm a dork. Oh, well. <clears throat> all right. Anyway, point being, yes, it just went on all my social media channels and I just saved myself hours of time because I did it all with one, which was called Hootsuite. And then I went over to Google my business and did it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Now, since we've gone through the main reasons why SEO is important, let's go to part two of this talk. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> All right. Why do you want to be found? Well, I would say 90% of my client base wants to be found through search engine optimization because they want to attract more business, right? We all want to attract yeah. our business, right? We all want our clients, our prospects to find us and buy from us, yes? But what if I told you that SEO will also help you find your next employees and it will also fortify your relationships with your vendors? So we are currently October, 2021. We are not fully post COVID. We're still dealing with some COVID stuff and we're still dealing with a large number of cargo ships off of the port of Los Angeles. It looks like a parking lot out there. They're getting better, the numbers are going down, but there are a lot of supplies coming from other countries that are on those ships. And then we have a shortage, even when they do get those, those ships, un, un, uh, what's the word, uh, unloaded, Loaded. And everything is, is now on land and it can go. Guess what? There's a shortage of truck drivers. So congratulations, you got off the ship. Now you got to get it across the country. So what if I were to tell you that you can use SEO to your advantage and find the labor pool that you are seeking? Why not have a careers page on your website? Mm. Mm -hmm. Why not use... Facebook job listings to help post your job openings and then boost that post for like a buck a day to get more people. That's all search engine optimization, folks. It's having people find you. And I'll tell you something else. When you get reviews for your business, whether they're good reviews or they're horrible reviews, whether they're five star or whether they are one star, and I'm talking Yelp, I'm talking Google My Business. I'm talking Facebook reviews. And if your website has a fancy review uh, library, if you will, where it captures, you've got, a sim you've got a really great CRM that allows you to seek out reviews from your clients after they've gotten service from you. If you've got that fancy stuff, there are four opportunities for people to give you a review, yes? My advice to you is respond to every single review you receive. Look, these people have taken the time out of their day to write you a thank you note. Thank you so much for taking good care of me, Tom. Thank you, Mark, for making my house look so beautiful. I appreciate you. Five stars. And even the people that are really pissed off at you. Tom, I don't know what you did, buddy, but you charge way too much money and I don't like you. So I'm going to rip you a new butthole on Yelp. <laughs> I'm going to give you a one star review. If you respond to those professionally and with heart and authenticity, people are going to see the genuineness of who you are as a business. They're going to fall in love with you and they're going to realize there are some crazy people out there that are just tire kickers and do not appreciate the extra value, the extra care and the warranty service that you provide on your work. There are people that are striking out on you on reviews because they can't strike out at the people that are really hurting them. So guess what? I'm sorry, it's a punch to the gut and it sucks, but they're striking out against you because you can. But your options are you can reply professionally, apologize if you really did screw up and offer ways to fix it. And let me tell you something. I've heard this multiple times. Your next employee is checking you out on your reviews and how mm -hmm. you respond. And they're judging you based off of your professionalism, your authenticity, your empathy. And if you keep a level head, the goal really folks is yes, to make money, 
But if you can be the most beloved business in your market, isn't that better? Think about it. There are four currencies. I know I'm going off on all these tangents, but it really does apply to SEO. Okay, so bear with me. There are four currencies. There's money, there's time, there's knowledge and relationships. Okay, four currencies. Money. We talk about money a lot in our society. We are so focused on money because we got bills to pay. We got a, a, a roof to cover our heads and we better make that rent or we better make that mortgage. We got kids that need to be educated and they want a toy or they want to go to dance lessons. Yeah, we've got a focus on money. That's a major, major currency. But the three others are not to be neglected. Time is a currency and it is not renewable. Once it's gone, it's gone, which is why I hope you're getting a lot of value out of this class, by the way, because I don't want this to be a time waster. <laughs> and another one is knowledge. When you have more knowledge, you can level up and that is a currency, right? Your value goes up the more specialized and the more knowledgeable and the more of an expert you are in your field. But relationships are the last currency. And let me tell you something, out of the four currencies, your relationships are your number one currency. Write that down. Your relationships are your number one currency. Why? Because your relationships will bring you more money, more time, and more knowledge. So do this. Step one, get a careers page on your website website. Step two, reply to every single dingle damn review that you have on all possible review sites. And put it out there in your blog, in your, in your Facebook job listings, on Craigslist, wherever you're doing it. Make sure that people know that you're hiring, even when you're not hiring. Let me repeat that. You may not be hiring right now. You may have all that you can handle, but you should always be recruiting. Always be recruiting. Oh, you want a really cool tip on how to get more, more people to want to work with you? I got one. I got one. So such a golden thing. Okay. If you're into the arts, if you're into cars, if you're into something and you just absolutely love this thing, whatever it is, I don't know. You're, let's just say you're part of the chamber of commerce. You want to have a, a ribbon cutting ceremony or you're, um, I don't know. You want, you just want to have some kind of party at your, at your office. Okay. We had a party last night in Morgan Hill at Studio 38. It was fantastic. We had, we got, got together and celebrated Oktoberfest. It was a blast and we got to see everybody. So what should you do at this party? Well, when you invite the community, not your competitors, but your community, when you invite your community to your big old party, whether it be a little art gallery in your lobby because you're featuring local artists or you're having a car show at your place because you're a huge enthusiast of VW, uh, vintage VW buses or whatever your thing is. Let's just say you like dancing and you, you wanna have a dance party at your whatever. I don't care what it is. What you do is you make sure that your team is with you there at the party and that everybody in the team is showing off all the really cool equipment that they're using and all the really cool stuff. And you can use that party as a recruitment opportunity. Now, do not pilfer from your fellow compadres in the same industry, but if you're inviting the whole community, you might be generating interest from other potential employees that are not working directly with your competitors. So it's a fine line, but it's a very effective tool. You following me? Mm -hmm. Do it with integrity, but throw a party. People will show up. Got a and question? Is this, yeah, I do have a question. Is it, you know, if you oh, build it, they will come. I said, if you build it, they will come. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The, my question was, um, if, you know, when you're, as a business owner, if you have, like you're saying, other interests, and I don't know if it's a party, but if it's more of a post or two now and again is related to a personal interest that you have, of course, if that's, you know, a hobbyist kind of thing, or if it's a charitable kind of thing, obviously very, very good, you know. Um, because it gives people, I would think, it gives some insight into some other aspect of you besides what your business does. 
which people like to know a little bit. They're curious. Um, there may be common bonds and things of that nature too that may drive uh, that curiosity to meet you and, and so forth. But just, you know, there's a story behind everybody, right? And, okay. Bravo, yes. Reveal who you are as a person mm -hmm. to your audience. Now, don't get political. Don't get into the debate about vaccinated versus not. Don't, right, don't right. go state. Don't get into religion. Like, keep it polite, right? Don't get into topics that could end up biting you. Like, right. what is what is the phrase? Um, don't ever write something down that you don't want your lawyer reading out in, in a court. Mm. <laughs> right? Okay. Mm. But if you're so like last night when we went to that party, there was that beautifully restored VW bus. And let me tell you how I was like kind of sad that it was raining and those windows were, those doors were open. I'm like, close the doors. Like, so, but the point being is that I loved seeing that aspect that he had the VW bus out there and everyone was dressed up and later hosen and, and the, the, the ladies were wearing their cute little outfits. Um, and there were beer signs. Like it was so on point with the whole German Oktoberfest thing. It was so fun, right? Mm -hmm. Pretzels and mustard. It was a blast. So yes, if you're into something, I, hey, you know, I teach West Coast Swing Dancing. My husband and I are posting our dance videos all the time. And because people get to see that aspect of me, they know that I'm more than just a marketer. I actually have a life and I love my husband and I love dancing with him and I love showing that off. So yeah, show your authentic self. What is it? Fly your freak flag. And when you do that, you will find the people who resonate with you and you are attracting your tribe of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. who absolutely love you because you are being your authentic self. And they're like, I love Tom. Tom is my people. I want to work with Tom. I love Mark. Oh my gosh. Mark is my people. I love Tanya because she runs the best association ever. I want to hang with these people. And I genuinely do. I was so excited, by the way, last night, seeing you all in person for the first time. <laughs> so how does this go back to SEO? You want to make sure that people who are looking for you can find, can find you, including employees. Now let's talk about that supply shortage thing again. All right. Once we get the labor to deliver those supplies, we won't have as much of a supply shortage, but there is a supply shortage for some industries, including the auto repair, including construction. So let's address that. If you have a page on your website that talks specifically to the vendors and lets them understand what makes your company special and unique, what is your why, how you want to partner with them in a very positive way, and that, yes, you pay them on time, would that attract more vendors to you that would be able to support you? And if you needed something faster than somebody else needed it, that you might take priority because you established that relationship? Could that happen? Mm. So, Jennifer, did you say that that would be a page as well that you would just like you have a careers page? You yes, So sir. here's my different audiences, my ecosystem of client people that hire me, people that I do business with to do what I do, my suppliers and all. And of course, my employee, uh, future employees. and Exactly. Right, okay. And right. if you really want to go gangbusters with your vendors page, why not? Why not promote the vendors that love on you the most and give them a little nudge. Are they going to appreciate that you're giving them an attaboy and a public uh, uh, endorsement that you're working with them? You bet your bippy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a vendors page and you, oh, oh, let's take it a step further. Check this out. What about your standard operating procedures? True or false, standard operating procedures will help you with your internal marketing. True or false? With your internal marketing. Mm -hmm. I would think true. True. Exactly. So think about this. When we think of marketing, most people, I know we've only got four minutes left, but we're going to get some good stuff in here. Most people think of marketing as external marketing. Get more clients, get more clients, get more clients. How important, though, is it to a business that the entire team understands the voice, the why, what makes it, what's make a, what makes a business special and unique. And your 
company's superpowers. How important is it for your entire team to know all of those things about your business so they can carry on that good positive energy, that good brand recognition, that good uh, can-do mentality that you're so working hard for everyone to know about in the in the exterior, in the, you know, uh, marketing, mm-hmm. you should have it internal marketing, right? So your standard operating procedures should include your own story, infusing the company culture within those standard operating procedures. And that's going to lower your attrition rates and it's going to make your business more scalable and it's going to make it more valuable when it's ready to sell. So yes, by the way, I can help you with that as well. <laughs> mm. What I love is storytelling and storytelling is super important to yes, your target audience, but also to your internal tribe, your vendors and your employees. And you can have SOPs that apply to your vendors. How many of us have a vendor that makes a regular delivery and we have a special door and a special procedure for them to follow so it doesn't interrupt the people in the showroom? And because we don't have that SOP documented and our vendors don't know our process, how many times do those vendors kind of screw it up? They come to the wrong door, they, they, they come at the wrong time, and they do the wrong things. So if you have a standard operating procedure that addresses your vendors and makes it easy for them to make everybody successful and it's more efficient for them, would that not be helpful? Yeah. Yep. And you can also put that as a, I don't know, a private unlisted or unindexed whatever thing on your website that you can direct the vendors to, to help them help you. Mm. So SEO is bigger than you think it is. It's bigger than voice recognition. It's bigger than closest auto repair shop, closest construction company, closest remodeler to me. It's everything folks. And it's the internet of the things. It's the internet of everything. Your car is tied to the internet. Everything is tied to the internet. So be findable. This concludes our time. We, 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 here's what we went over. We went over what you should do with your website. Make sure, make sure that you have a Google My Business listing. Make sure that you um, uh, take regular videos educating people and put it on your YouTube channel. Take those YouTube links, embed them in your website. Have it all feed into your website. Because the last thing I want to think about, I want you to think about this. Why is all this important? Well, if you're listening to a musician playing a guitar and the guitar is is attached to an amplifier or a speaker to make sure that people can hear it, where is the music coming from? Is it coming from the guitar or is it coming from the speaker? It's coming from the guitar. Oh, well, yeah. Coming from the the source. source. The source of the music is coming from the from the guitar and it's going out to the speaker and the amplifier so it can be heard, right? Your website... Your website is the guitar and Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google My Business, all that. They're the amplifiers. They're the speakers and amplifiers helping it reach. But the source of the music is your website. Make sure that everything you want to convey is on your website because that is where you should be directing traffic. Mic drop. (laughs) And you got an and you got a guitar right behind you. So, <laughs> yeah, I can even do a drum roll if you want. But like, yeah, right, exactly, it's true. Awesome, Eight, love it. I'm all about the bass. <laughs> if we have follow up questions, where do we reach you? Love that question. Let me give you my cell phone. Yes, even people on the replay, call me anytime. I don't care. Call me at two in the morning. I don't care. I'm usually working. Four zero eight eight three three. 9868. Let me repeat that. Jennifer Filson, 408-833-9868. My email is jenniferfilson at gmail.com. So let me spell that for you. J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-F as in Fred, I-L-Z as in zebra, E-N as in Nancy, jenniferfilson at gmail.com. My website, if you Google Rockstar Marketing Monterey, California, you should be good. If you just Google Rockstar Marketing, unfortunately, there's like a bazillion oh, Rockstar Marketings out there. So here's how to spell it. www.rock-star-mktg.com. 
dot com. I just put it in the chat. Rock dash star dash MKTG. When in doubt, here's another one. Jenniferfilzen.com. Yep, you heard me. Jennifer Filzen.com. 